Fantastic feeling up there. Yeah, it's like sitting inside history. Did you sign the guest register? Yes, thank you. Come again. Cut that out. Oh, cut it out. I'm entitled to leave my mark. It's 296 steps up and 296 steps down. Don't you got any respect? Respect for what? What are you, some kind of squares? Men died here. There's nothing square about that. Beat it. Ah, come on. Well, I didn't think people cared anymore. Your first trip to Boston? Yes, we're just uh, passing through. Are you a visitor, too? No, I live in Boston. I often come here. You must be even more upset by uh... vandalism. That's one of the reasons I come. Whenever I find myself in moments of weakness, giving in to feelings of faith in mankind, I come here. I see the desecration of this shrine. Then I remember again what people really are. Permit me to introduce myself. I'm John Westerbrook. <laughs> Todd Stiles. Forgive the idiosyncrasy. I never shake hands. What are your names? Stiles. I'm Murdoch. Murdoch. Stiles. Good names. Good American names. Buzz Murdoch. I'm Todd Stiles. You sure? Yes. Thank you. You're planning more sightseeing then? Oh, yeah, this is our first stop. We're going to Lexington and Concord. And, and uh, don't forget old Ironsides. That's right. Then you must allow me to be your guide. All right. No, no, I insist. I know the landmarks quite well. It would be my pleasure. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Not at all. You haven't met my associates, Miss Van Ness, Mr. Davis. Mr. Williams. Hi. You have your car here? Yes, sir. Uh, it's right down that street. Good, then you can follow me. I'll pick you up at the corner. Say you. I beg your pardon? Well, I was only going to say that your name seemed familiar to me. In what connection? When I was in college, the American history text was... Henry Westerbrook, my father. <laughs> I had him for a living text. You'll follow us then. Thank you. Boy, this is some guided tour you got us into. At least it ought to be interesting. I wonder what happened to his hand. I'm not worried about that. Why does Westerbrook need a bodyguard? That's what I want to know. Is that what Davis is? Come on, don't put me on. A shoulder holster in broad daylight? What gives with this guy? I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Get a load of that. That's Westerbrook's car? As I said, this ought to be interesting.
Elizabeth, T-I-L-E-S, and M-U-R-D-O-C-K Murdoch. Uh, apparently, they're from New York. Now, they're driving a uh, gray sports car, New York license, uh, 2D7876. Uh, they're both in their early 20s. Now, Monitor wants to know who they are, bloodlines and origins, as quickly as possible. I don't have a lot to go on. Tell him I know, Bert. Yeah, listen, Monitor's aware. I just want you to understand that this is going to take a little time. Yes, we understand. I'd like to find out they were friends. It would be nice if the world were like that, but it isn't. You can't have me all to yourself, Amelia. The inner circle will grow. There'll be other friends. Those of us who love you have a stake in your welfare. Welfare? Would you have let me do this? country in the world preserves the marks of its greatness through the centuries. We throw away our past before it's hardly born. Everything must immediately be replaced by something new. Not necessarily better, merely newer. When I think how this great ship was discarded to be saved by a single poem and the pennies of school children. I could kill. However, there's a great deal more to see. Mr. Boris, Emery Williams. I've checked monitor on your query about the mailing list. Well, he thinks 12,000 for the Dallas area would be a good beginning. Naturally, he doesn't want you hampered by money worries, so uh, we're sending out a check this afternoon for $2,500. Away come, America. began. The first shot in the American Revolution was fired here, April 19, 1775. The Boston Massacre and the Tea Party had already happened. The Minutemen were already hiding muskets, bullets, cannon, here in Lexington. And the British were under orders to confiscate them. So the enemy began their match on the night of April 18, 1775. The Minutemen had already gathered there, in that tavern, to await the word. And it came. It came. At 10.30 that night, two lanterns were hung in the steeple of the old North Church in Boston. That was the signal. And down that road came a man on horseback, our first and perhaps our greatest hero, Paul Revere. He risked his life to sound the warning. The British are coming, he said, and the people listened. Do you see the spot? Right there they waited. A hundred odd brave men, knowing they'd be outnumbered forward to one. And their commanding officer sounded the battle cry. Stand your ground, he said. Don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. Those were men.
Sometimes I find communication painful. Will you forgive me if I move on alone? Bye. I like you both. If you wish to see me again, please do so. If you need help, money, advice, power of any sort, call on me. what money and advice are, but what's power of any sort? Here's the lesson for us, here and now. But what's happened to the memory of a hero? Surrounded by these misfits of foreign lands, the undesirable, the rabble. Better to have this landmark wiped off the face of the earth, to see it eroded, whittled down, eaten away by these parasites of our heritage. Mark those faces, because you'll have to point out the enemy to those who are going to fight on our side. The history and purity of America must be restored. Awake America. Awake, Awake America! Awake America! Awake America! Awake America! I mean, like, what would he have against shaking hands? Like, is he afraid of germs? You think that's what's bugging him? Don't turn around. Just check it in the rearview mirror. I think somebody's following us. Swing around a corner. Let's complicate his life a little bit, huh? Hang on. I have a gun, but I'm not reaching for it. As you can see, I work for the government. For reasons we'll explain, we didn't want to lose track of you. So, here we are. Now, the question is, what do I do with you for the next hour and a half? I was supposed to contact you at 3.30. I was also supposed to do it quietly. All right, what's this all about? Well, we said it would be interesting, and interesting it's been. 
Well, if we had any sense, we'd open that door, walk through it, and close it behind us. Not me, buddy. I wanted to find out why he couldn't contact us till exactly 3.30. Well, in the first place, I figured it would take me at least that long to pick up a background on you. In the second place, I had to bring somebody I want you to meet. And he had to come all the way from Princeton. I'm Special Agent Ben Newcomb. And unlike Mr. Westerbrook, we shake hands around here. Come on in. We'll try to uh, ease your curiosity. This way, gentlemen. Now, that's Perry Hall. Perry, I believe you know Mr. Stiles and Mr. Murdoch. Perry's face is a little red. He's supposed to be an expert in surveillance by auto. <laughs> and this gentleman is the one I was telling you about from Princeton. Uh, sit down, please. Make yourself comfortable. You're going to be here for some time. In case it wasn't mentioned to you before, you're both here voluntarily. If you should decide to leave right now, we won't even try to stop you. But if you do what we ask you, I'm not going to say that it might be dangerous. It will be. I'll make it dark, baby. Free movies. Now, this is some film we took ourselves. And that's a public meeting hall which John Westerbrook hired for one of his meetings five days ago. That's Mr. Westerbrook's car. I guess that's before he uh, hurt his hand. Oh, you'll see him hurt his hand in this movie. Now, the people around Mr. Westerbrook, and they're the inner circle. They're the cadre. The Patriot Sons of Hamilton was organized by and belongs to Westerbrook himself. Now, the people you see in the auditorium, they're just there out of curiosity or boredom. They just have nothing else to do. Or some neighbor told them about the society. Most of them will never turn up at a Westerbrook meeting again. Most of the regulars, the hardcore members of the Patriot Sons of Hamilton, are professional haters. They belong to several other organizations, too. That fellow you're looking at right now, he belongs to 23 different hate organizations. Jack Davis, Westerbrook's personal bodyguard. He was court-martialed by the Army in 1950 for unnecessary cruelty to a prisoner of war. He's an expert on explosives. Emory Williams, economist, PhD, Phi Beta Kappa. He's Westerbrook's personal theoretician. He tried to get a post in the State Department some time ago, and he was turned down cold as a security risk. He's been in mental hospitals three times. Amelia Van Ness, wealthy, probably supports Westbrook with most of the money, although he has some money of his own that he inherited from his mother. As near as we can make out, She's not interested in Westerbrook's ideas. She's just interested in Westerbrook. She and Williams hate each other. Uh, Miss Van Ness also hates Jack Davis, and it's mutual. Uh, three of those fellows there, uh, they have records of assault and other felonies. John Westerbrook. If you've talked to him for 10 minutes, he's told you that he's the son of the famous historian, Henry Westerbrook. He has money, personal charm, and a very fine mind. A fine mind. He's got five separate degrees, two PhDs, one in philosophy and one in mathematics. He's got an IQ of 158. Uh, will you turn up the sound out there? Just as this, this flaming torch is a symbol of the liberty of which we have been deprived. And who was it that took away that liberty from us? May I tell you, we are to blame, we ourselves. We brought them here, we invited them here, we opened up our arms. Yes, we did. Read what it says in the Statue of Liberty. Give us your poor, your huddled masses. 
we said to them, to this human garbage, to this refuse from every other country on earth, we said unto them, come! And they came. This mongrel scum washed over the shores of America like a tidal wave of garbage. Now, it's all very well to cry, love thy neighbor. But I say, which neighbor? <laughs> There is a time to love and a time to hate. But now love is a weakness. Now is the time to hate. Wake up, America, and learn to hate before it's too late. Awake, America! Awake, America! Awake, America! Awake, America! Awake, America! Awake, America! You think that's frightening? I want you to watch what comes next. Turn it up, Harry. Now, now this is the question and answer period. Monitor, do we have plans to establish concentration camps in this country? <laughs> it's a happy thought, I'm sure. But I'm afraid it's a little premature. Um, yes, uh, in the back? Uh, this isn't a question exactly. It's more like a suggestion. My friends and I have formed a royalist club on campus because we believe the time has come for a monarchy in America. Now, you would be the king, of course, and your title could be King John the First. Thank you for the collegiate humor. <laughs> Any other questions? No, wait a minute. And we're willing to give up our liberty to put you on the throne. The least you can do is listen. Now, the big problem is to find a woman pure enough to be the queen. So, uh, how about a nationwide beauty concept? <laughs> Get him out of here. inside Westerbrook's organization. Three months ago, he brought us the information that Westerbrook had acquired a store of plastic explosives, enough to blow up two or three city blocks. He didn't find out where or when Westerbrook was planning to use it. Our man was killed in an auto accident just after he brought us this information. He might have been murdered. We don't know. Well, now we have to replace this man. And until this morning, we just didn't know how. Well, our meeting Westerbrook this morning was an accident. Well, that's one of the good things about it, Mr. Stiles. It was an accident. And no matter how Mr. Westerbrook checks you, and believe me, he will, there's nothing that he or any of his private detective agencies can find out that'll connect you with us. Now, Perry, let me see that itinerary, will you? Now, Mr. Westerbrook is planning a speaking tour in this area. Now, that's a schedule. Now, uh, I want you to get in touch with him. Tell him that you want to become part of his organization. He likes you. He'll accept you. Just... Oh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Uh, look, we've had five men looking for those explosives. One man is dead, and the other four got no place. Well, we wouldn't know what to do or where to start. Just being near Mr. Westerbrook is important. Listening, observing. Any sign, any word that'll give us the lead to the where or when. And you don't even have to contact us. We'll keep the contact. Look, we don't want to look like a couple of heels. I mean, we're patriotic and all that. It's just that, well, we don't know anything about this stuff. We're not qualified. OK, so he has some dynamite or something. Plastic explosives, they're not quite the same. When Westerbrook was born, his mother died. The father, as you know, was a busy man. 
He handed the child over to a nurse. When the boy was eight, the father was told that he was disturbed. Nineteen, the boy was expelled from a college because of a fight when he tried to kill a fellow student with a knife. On advice from the psychiatrist, the father tried to have his son committed. To do that, he had to take him before a jury of his peers. The jury considered and rejected the father's testimony. John Westerbrook was sent free to walk in the world. Even at that time, the psychiatrist was able to predict that out of Westerbrook's self-hatred and self-contempt, he would attempt to mutilate himself. And he would attempt some crime that would make society so angry that never again be allowed to walk free in the world. You saw him thrust his hand in that flame. Now we're asking you, not for his sake, but for the sake of the other people he may hurt, to help prevent him from taking that next step. You know, you must know, that not even the thought of mass murder will stop him. Are you his psychiatrist, sir? This is Henry Westerbrook. That's right. I'm John's father. You'll start the first thing in the morning. You'll go to him and tell him I just spent the whole evening thinking about what he said, wrestling with your conscience. You think he's right. Well, then how does Monitor see the future of our country? The future. There will be a commander. Look, a real commander, not a president elected by the mob, the people. What do they know? Well, this man will be chosen. Is that the role that Monitor sees for himself? Styles, you've been attending these meetings night after night. Haven't you been listening? Now, Monitor's destiny is to make it happen. How? An incident. Blood will be spilled and then more blood. Then they will listen. That's his role, to make it happen. Then Americans will awake. Because of him, after him, there will be a commander. What kind of an incident? Look, don't you try to get close to me. Don't interfere with me, Mongrel. We don't trust you. Mongrel? Yes, we checked on you, you know. What are you? An orphan. Uh, what are your bloodlines? <laughs> Who knows? Is that your name, Murdoch? On the contrary, it's somebody's name chosen at random, handed to you. Wait a minute, Williams. But not on that account, your name. Who are you? What are you? A mongrel. Oh. What's going on here? The report. I told this mongrel. You told him, Emery. I make the decisions here. can't stand to be touched, but I'd like to put my fingers to your forehead and draw your pain into me. To be touched is to be undone. 
What is there in me that holds me to my purpose, except my hate, fed by my pain? Whoever takes my pain does me no kindness. Whoever teaches me love destroys my purpose. I understand. I'd be surprised if you did. You've no concept of destruction. You've no concept of the fury which calls the attention of the world. Do you know what I really intend to do? Do you understand how terrible an act I must perform? Not Oedipus who killed his own father, or that other Greek who slew his mother was as terrible as I will be. Do you understand that? Yeah. Uh, could you understand? You relate to me through the female principle of love. I relate to a greater love, love of country, a love that has brought me guilt and pain and hate. Give me an ampoule, please. Monitor. Monitor, we've got the permits. He fought them like a tiger. He took their arguments against your speaking and he shredded them one by one. He tore them to pieces. I told them that this is a country ruled by law and not by men. I told them that we would fight them in the courts and expose them in the public press. They gave up. We got them. A permit for a public meeting in the Paul Revere Mall. Come on, Stiles. There's no stopping us now. There's a time and a tide, and that tide taken at the crest, we move on never to be stopped again. I stood there on that platform, listening to the puny mockery of those boys. And I felt the audience silently slipping out of my grasp. And I knew that all was lost. Unless, unless something fantastic. And then it came into my mind to put my hand into the fire. But which hand? Which hand? I stood there looking at my two hands. My left hand, precious, but not as precious as my right. And I knew as I stood there that if I put my left hand into the flame, it would give me 50,000 followers. But if I gave my right hand, destiny! Wakes me up to see a girl cry. Just leave me alone. Crying's not going to help him either. Me, he'll end up just standing by watching him destroy himself. No, he promised. No matter what happens tomorrow, the heart of his plan demands that he stay alive. What happens tomorrow? He promised. He promised. You know, I've been watching you for a while. And uh, tell me the truth now. Do you really believe what he stands for? I believe in John. And what if he says the, the sun revolves around the moon? Well, then for me, the sun would revolve around the moon. Get on your feet. And take your hands off. That mongrel is as mongrel does. He didn't do anything. All right, take him outside. I don't want to track the moment you had your back turned, he had his hands on her. Friendships die. New ones are born. Are you with me or with him? You can't have it both ways.
Hey, get me the goop, will you? You ready? Ready. So far, not a sign. Well, it's plastic. It occupies space. It's not invisible. It's got to be around here someplace. Brian, you're the demolition expert. Where do we begin? With plastic? Could be any place. Look, the first thing we got to do is get all these people out of this mall and fast. No, no, no. He's hurry. If we rush in and push the panic button now, Westerbrook won't wait. He'll just let fly before we can get anyone to see. OK, what do we do? I don't know. today. Westbrook comes out alive and that's it. That's it. Brian? How would they set the stuff off in this area? Lots of ways. An electric charge. Set it off manually or push a button. Or a timing device. Or even a bullet fired directly into the plastic. Lots of ways. So we don't even know what kind of device we're looking for. But if the stuff is here, we're going to find it. Now, right now, we're going to comb this entire area with a fine tooth comb. All right, now get going. How do you feel? Great, great. Yeah, that figures. Buzz, as of this minute, you know these people better than any of us. Now, it could be that our only hope is to upset their plan somehow, to get them to tip where the stuff is hidden. Have you got any ideas? Yeah, I got one if you want to take a flyer. I'll take any help I can get.
are you doing here? Your ad in the paper did say, all real Americans, please attend. Don't I qualify, John? Of course, but since you're here, please sit up on the platform. That's quite out of the question, and you know it. Please, Father, you must. The platform is safer. I, I mean, with this crowd. Please do me the honor and sit at my side. No. Please, Father. Did you know this is it? Set for today, for sure. How'd you find out? Amelia? You know anything? Nothing. Except they're all set to go off like time bombs. I better get back. Look, keep a good eye on me, huh? When I do something, go with it. Right? Oliver, it's time. Please, Father. No. Hand to the plane. 
been a Screen Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.